okay. Sorry, I'm just because Leo Leo died in ninety one and he worked right up until literally the day before he died. He had been at work that day and he passed away that evening. So a few other things have come in here, but the photographs and you can even see the phone book is a eighty nine ninety phone book. I mean we didn't put that there. It's been here since they had a lot of photographs that uh, that Leo had taken. And he was he was into photography, but he took pictures of some very odd things. These are a lot of this is them building these buildings. Because all these buildings along here, Leo actually owned the property and built them. Well, I thought that was interesting that you have, you're on Fender Avenue. So That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Leo took a lot of his uh, CBS money that he had burning a hole in his pocket and uh, bought this chunk of land, not the whole piece of land, but a good portion of this area between State College and Placentia, and that's why they renamed it Fender Avenue, because he owned a good chunk of it. So, in fact, it, in this box here, all these, these are all the drawings of the buildings. So it's the rebar and the plumbing and the electrical. And he also didn't throw a whole lot of stuff away. See, so that, that, was, that was Leo's desk. This was George Fullerton's uh, drafting table. So the dynamic was Leo, Leo was the idea guy. He would draw little things like here. This was, this was kind of like a Leo sketch of something. The cocktail napkin. And then, yeah. yeah, it was like cocktail napkin engineering. Yeah. And then would give it to George, and George was the draftsman. Ah. He was the artist, and he was the guy who would take the time to do all the blueprints. So he, George would work here, and this is a set of what draftsmen used to do arcs. This is called, these are called French curves. And this is a whole set that belonged to George, and you know, you don't know. You look at this, could these have been the ones they used to design the Stratocaster with. Hmm. I mean, you look at this box, this could easily be mm -hmm. from the 40s or 50s on that, and I can't imagine these things wearing out. No. And George was around at the time, but unfortunately he's not around to ask anymore. Yeah. But there's some, hey, here's, a, you know, here's a, a notebook with Leo Fender's name on it. That's awesome. That's kind of interesting. And this is a, a, a sales book that must have been Leo's that's got pictures of a lot of early Fender stuff. Here's like a P-Base and an early Strat and a Telecaster, but there's a lot of pictures of the, the old steel guitars. That was a huge part of the Fender business in the early days. The, the conventional sort of stand-up steel guitars. These all had like telescoping legs on them so you could stand up and play them. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if you can get this, but here's a, this is a 1957 Fender price list that somebody went wow. through and these are the retail prices. Somebody typed in, this is the actual wholesale price. <laughs> so a, a Stratocaster guitar with, uh, this is with gold hardware, was uh, gold plated hardware, $165. Wow. The wholesale price. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. That so it'd be nice if you had, oh my gosh, I don't know. Sixty, seventy thousand oh, dollars, maybe. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, I mean, we've got file cabinets full of real old, interesting stuff. Here's a, here's a, here's, here's Leo Fender's 1976 Nam badge. Oh, how cool! <laughs> when Nam was actually at the Disneyland Hotel, wow. it hadn't even moved over to the convention the center yet. It was so small. Hmm. It was just, wow. yeah. But there's a lot, a lot of Leo's documentation, patents, things like that. There's, We've got a couple of ledger books with his investments in him because this was Leo's office and there was nobody to say, Mr. Fender, get back to work. <laughs>